everybody, Young Grass Hawker here. Welcome to the Clipside Bunker in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And this is just a tournament edition update. Wanted to shoot this because I have a lot to talk about with you guys. So right now, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking all of my extra pieces and my trays and I am dividing them and making up three complete sets of tournament edition g40 i've got that many pieces you can see the pieces that are in the trays themselves and then the plastic pieces that i will go through the stuff in the middle and fill up and i've also got to go through all of this as well <laughs> so not only is it going to allow me to put together sets of tournament edition g40 but it's also going to Give me peace of mind knowing that my pieces are all organized and whatnot. So I've started with the roundels, the facilities, acrylics like air bases, naval bases and whatnot. So you can see the stacks in the middle that I have to divide now. The, the set that I use is already in the trays, in the table. And these are what I have to go through plus those mixed up pieces that you saw over there. So I should be able to get three complete sets, I'm hoping. So just an update about Tournament Edition. I just want to say first and foremost, thank you to everybody who is playing online or playing at tables and sending me reports. And the feedback has been incredibly positive. And everybody's enjoying it. I had a game recently which was amazing. I'll tell you about that in a moment. But this is going to be a video where I'm just sort of pointing it at the table. And talking to you guys about a few things. And um, yeah, so everybody's sending battle reports and whatnot. Just really helpful. And we don't see anything that needs to change right now. I know that... Some people have brought up some concerns, but not really enough to justify any changes. So I'm really happy about that because Tournament Edition rule set hasn't changed for a long, long time. Um, since I rolled it out in December, when I first moved into my new bunker here, there hasn't been any changes. So that's really good. That's really positive, especially now that you can play grasshoppers g40 tournament edition on triple a and again big thanks to contango for setting that up and just really great that that's available for more games more reports to come in and again the feedback has been incredibly positive i want to let you guys know about a new channel it's not new. I mean, I had this channel for a long time. I have a secondary channel and I've decided to now use that for a lot of tournament edition footage. I don't want to fill up my main channel here with um, just video after video after video of tournament edition. I want people to learn how to play G40 out of box and I've got a whole agenda of videos whether it be tutorials, customizations, battle board basics, discussion, um, any of my new videos like tips, tricks, and tidbits, things like that. I want to leave this a lot for that. I mean, obviously, you have to learn how to play G40 before you can understand Tournament Edition anyway. But I will put a link in the description box of this video where you can go to that alternative channel and subscribe if you're interested in learning tournament edition again we're talking about axe now is 1940 global second edition i've already put up my five part series over there to start and i'm also mirroring videos made by corporal clegg and hell on wheels who are in the middle of a game right now of tournament edition so every video every youtube war turn I've been posting over there. So it's all on one channel. Those two gentlemen going back and forth. I believe they're starting round three now. And I'll even tag this video over there. So 
the main important stuff, strategies, any rule changes that might come in the future, I'll definitely make mention here on my main channel. But when it comes to just anything that I want to post, videos that other people are doing on their channels and everything, I'm just going to fill that other channel all to do with Tournament Edition. That channel is called 3G40. And I mean, Grasshopper's Tournament Edition after 2022 when I have my main event, my big international tournament event here in Toronto 2022. I mean, I don't feel like I can go back to playing G40. I don't mind using this channel to teach G40 out of box here. Um, but as far as a gaming group goes, I don't believe that we're going to um, go back to that myself personally anyways so um check out that channel check out that link i'll also provide a link in the description box of this video sending you to the link for triple a to download grasshoppers tournament edition and if you're playing online give it a shot give it a try um, there's not much different than out of box however it does change the game drastically of course, when you change the order of play, when you combine UK Pacific with Anzac and bring in these tokens you need to win the war. But the reports coming in are, are cool when you hear that people love it simply because they can finish a game in six, seven hours. Now, that's pretty cool. I think that it takes more like seven to eight hours, but... What's great is you know that the game will end and you know that there will be a winner. And not only that, it's intense, really intense. And again, the games that I continue to play with different people just bring up so much more drama that you didn't think that this variant was was capable of. Um, I've just uh, said to myself, I'm not going to have any expectations anymore. There's just so much drama and different things that can happen in a game. I'll tell you about my recent game, but the most memorable Axis and Allies games that I've had by far are these tournament edition token system type games. So I also want to mention a fella named Anthony in Wisconsin. He is going to be having a tournament of his own. And right now he's at four tables, I believe, or he wants to fill four tables. If you're in the Wisconsin area, just comment in this video if you're interested. I believe that he's planning on hosting that in August. I'll get more details. And, um, you know, contact me and I'll see if uh, he wants me to share his contact info if you're interested in playing tournament edition meeting new people in wisconsin in august all right and uh he's got maps printed already and he's planning on just doing everything he can to have a really awesome event so just to finish up now i want to talk about this video uh sorry this um this game i had recently i was playing america and UK Pacific and China and somebody was playing my partner was playing uh, UK Europe Russia France and we had Contango and a friend of his over and they were the Axis and man right from the get-go it was intense because Contango is a good player and he was playing Germany and he invested a lot of money to go after North Africa token and he got that over here in the Pacific, I had my hands full because his partner was really coming uh, down on Sydney. Ended up losing Sydney. I don't know why I'm showing you the map with all this stuff on it. <laughs> but uh, he ended up taking the Sydney token. And we were down 2-0. Uh, round 4, I believe. Um, or even as early as round 3. But I think it was round 4. We were down 2 nothing. Didn't have anything going for us, but... You know, Japan, because of the positioning, he was so out of position, he didn't end up taking any money islands all game, and that really sacrificed his economy. 
And he came hard after the Pacific Islands next. And all I can say about this battle, and I could say lots, I could spend a whole hour talking about that game. It was just so amazing. There were so many storylines. It was crazy. We were like, we were blown away, but we pretty much used every inch of the Pacific. So that's a great, great game. What a relief it is to not, to have such a big board, to have so many sea zones in the Pacific and only go back and forth between, say, Hawaii and Queensland and then him going between Tokyo and Philippines and back and forth that way, never really using the majority of the sea zones that are in the Pacific. Well, we fixed that because we had a game of the ages where I actually was upset because I didn't have a destroyer to block in Fiji. So we were like all over the Pacific. It was intense. Now, we ended up tying that game because of the Japan economy. We ended up taking the China token because that... China meat grinder and the fact that Calcutta was safe and making lots of money we ended up taking the Asia token and the China token and we tied the game and we were looking really really good now all those aircraft carriers and transports and aircraft that Germany was using to take the Africa token was now coming up towards sea lion and really threatening sea lion I had an invasion force for the Americans to go into mosque, uh, Morocco, but but that wasn't really necessary anymore because there was really no chance of us getting our Africa token. There was too much to take in Africa, so I used that landing force to go up and help uh, save London. We were tied at that point, and we were going for the attrition token, the tie, and we were trying so hard to... And he attacked Scotland twice, before he attacked London. We were throwing units at it like crazy. And we let our guard down. We thought we were safe after we pushed him back into the sea after his first sea lion attempt. And there were so many subs around that my partner um, decided to buy a, a few destroyers thinking he was safe. And that's when Devin really just took everything that he could and went in for a second attempt on sea lion and without the money spent on the land with the money spent in the sea there wasn't enough to repel that second invasion they ended up winning three to two with the london token so really really intense so many storylines just really awesome game and it's these types of experiences where we're not going to go back to out of box, um, especially after seeing just how much of the Pacific. It was a chess match. It was an intense chess match, and it was great. So if you're interested in trying this, if you're a G40 player and you want to try something different new, um, I want to guide you to the description box. I'll put a link in there going to axnallies.org my forum thread where the rule set is there now i haven't been putting up a lot of videos lately because i've been working so hard at customizations um, to do with this variant so my card decks i've been working and putting a lot of hours in my card decks want to try and get them out really hoping i can have them available for anthony's event in wisconsin um but I just want to finish up. I know I said I was going to talk about the game and that was it. But I want to just talk a little bit about some of the battle reports coming in and giving you guys a little bit of advice. And I don't have the map to point and show you guys certain things. But here's where it comes down to. If you as a player have difficulty executing strategies whether it be as the axes or as the allies you'll have a lot more difficulty in this game because this game is goal oriented you you really need to achieve things in this game and if you don't have the 
um, forget basic skills. If you don't have more advanced skills where you are confident landing in London or you are confident as America um, getting the courage to go and do an amphibious assault in Rome, um, if you don't have the ability to do that long drive towards Moscow, to take Moscow, you're going to have difficulty in this game. And that I want to address this because some of the reports are when I hear the tokens being taken and at what times the tokens are being taken and who's playing who and whatnot. I don't know anybody's skill level out there, but I can kind of get a sense. I mean, I always said there's no reason why the Allies shouldn't get their Africa token. But in our game recently, I was playing on the Allies. We didn't get that Africa token as the Allies. Um, but it's a doable token. And I just want to say that the Pacific Island token for the Allies is, in my opinion, just as easy as the Africa token. I don't see a lot of people trying to go for that as the United States. Um, but back to just... Um, bringing it in and just saying that these achievements require skill and you know we've thought about alter um, alternating or what's the word tweaking a few things because of some of the reports that we've heard but we really got to just absorb you know what is the skill level and again we don't know what the skill level is but um if we see the same thing consistently happening then fine we had thought of helping the allies out by introducing something but then we thought maybe we should help out the axis and then we realized no we have to help out the allies a little bit more just simply because as the axis Again, if you don't have the basic G40 out-of-box skills to achieve the things that are needed in out-of-box, you're not going to win in tournament edition. And, you know, this game is more geared, more designed for the experienced players, right? So at the tournament, when good elite or advanced skilled players come to play as the Axis, they're not going to be pushed around. They're going to go out and get those tokens and be up to nothing like what happened in our game. And then we're chasing for the attrition token, the tie, right? And before, you know, we listen to people's suggestions about the rules, I mean, I'm just asking you guys to just sort of think and be honest with yourselves. Where are you at? Especially with the axis because... Most people are saying that the Axis are still too, um, the Allies are still too favored. It's hard to play against the combined UK Pacific. And, and then we hear that the Allies are having trouble in another report. You know, they don't have enough achievable tokens, not like the Axis. So, it works both ways. This is a game of achievements. I always hated in out of box playing in games years ago where the allies were claiming victory um, and they hadn't even really achieved anything yet. And of course, the victory conditions in out of box are terrible. It's so hard to declare a winner if, if you ever end up doing it at all. And, you know, usually winners are are chosen rather than you know achieved so I just want to leave you with that um, we'll talk more about this in another discussion video in the future and check out that channel check out the triple a link if you're interested in playing online and testing it there check out Anthony's uh, tournament and Ask yourself if you want to go to that and contact me if you're interested in joining those guys. Uh, great way to meet friends if you don't know anybody there, especially if you live close to Wisconsin. And, you know, it's a great way to just meet people enough to secure friendships so that you can play again in the future. All right, guys. So I know I did a lot of walking around. I tried to go slow. Didn't want to make you dizzy. If you're watching the screen, um, it's more of a discussion, but I also wanted to share with you what I'm doing. 
and just to basically say you know there hasn't been a whole lot of videos this month I'm doing things like this um, I'm playing a game but it's just so much work to do the customizations the map file the card decks um, I'm working hard at those trying to get those out for everybody and I have to wait to see if there's anything going to change in regards to those cards before I eventually release it. But I'm doing everything I can to get those out. Check out that channel. Check out uh, Corporal Clegg and Hell on Wheels. Thanks guys for trying out my tournament edition in your YouTube wars. And good luck. And we'll see how that goes. Alright guys, cheers. Thanks a lot. May all your rolls be ones. See you in the next vid.